Okay, first question is from Haley Phillips 34. If my left bicep and shoulder are bigger than my right, right bicep and shoulder, does that mean I should do extra reps on the smaller, less developed arm? So there's two strategies when trying to bring up symmetry, okay? One is, in my experience, far better than the other. Now, one is to maintain your current level of training and everything for the more developed side and just try to make the underdeveloped side develop faster, even faster than it has been. The other strategy is to use the smaller side and weaker side as a guide. So you slow down the development from the dominant side to allow the smaller side to catch up. Now, the first option sounds more uh, appealing to people because they don't want to slow any gains down, right? So they no, no, no. I want to keep everything growing at the same pace. I just want to make the weaker, smaller side grow faster. But the truth is that almost never works. I've almost never seen that balance someone out. The only strategy I've, I've ever really seen be effective is where you slow down the progress from the bigger side by using the smaller side as a guide. So one way to do that would be, let's say one shoulder is stronger than the other. I do my sets with my weaker side first and however many reps I could do with that, I do that with the with the stronger side, even if I can do more, even if I could do more with the stronger side. I, I agree mm -hmm. with that, but there's part of this, there's, there's a question that's missing from this question and that's why. Right. So, and I think that's the mistake that a lot of people make in this situation. There's a, there's normally a really good reason why there's that much discrepancy. So, and this was a mistake that I think I made as a, a young trainer early on was just trying to solve the, oh, this is bigger. So, and what Sal said, I think is, is the answer. I think that going unilateral type of movements, focus on the weaker side first. As soon as your form starts to break down, you stop it right there. And then you mirror that with the dominant side, even if you can do two or three more sets and eventually it'll catch up. But there normally is a reason why you have have that. And this one in particular, like when you have the, the shoulder and the bicep dominant, I had this and I can't help but think that this person, what is that's their dominant side is that way. And it's rolled forward, right? So if you have, like I had where my, my left shoulder was rolled forward just, and it's like, just barely the average, eye wouldn't be able to tell this, but it was just enough rolled forward more than the other side. So then every time that I did these curls, my 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 front delt and my bicep was or my front delt was taking over the load and then it's already a dominant strong side because it's my dominant side that I use to play sports and everything else and so and then you go to do you know barbell exercises where both arms are working at the same time and the dominant side just takes over the movement you got to address the 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 breakdown in the mechanics and the posture right so and that's that was really uh, the motivation behind Maps Prime is you have that assessment test that's in there to see how your your mechanics are and how you how your movement is and then if you're it's broken down anywhere what exercises you should do to prime and address that and so to me you also need to do whatever is necessary before the workout to fix your posture and a, and a good video to reference is the the bicep curl one that I did on our YouTube channel. And this is part of the reason why I talked about the pulling the shoulders back and doing this split stance thing is because it is, it's very common with people that are learning to, and this is not talking about advanced people, everybody else, general population, when they do a bicep curl with both arms, like doing a camber curl or a straight bar curl, they end up cheating one side more than the other. And so addressing the breakdown in the form and technique and using something like a, the the Prime or the Prime Pro compasses and tests in there, that, in my opinion, has to be done first before any of this, and then you take the advice that you just gave Sal and go that way. Yeah, I think it's interesting to think about. Uh, I definitely agree with with you, you know focusing on um, you know bringing it up, but also like doing as many reps as you can, and then kind of stopping with your dominant arm, but. What about, you know, the lifestyle implications in terms of like then prioritizing certain movements that aren't super skilled movements, but they're just everyday things that you're constantly focused on, like using more of your left arm, like just picking things up constantly, uh, opening things, like grabbing things, just doing, just being a lot more mindful of like using your, your left arm to then kind of like reconnect and, and get that 
a portion of it because you know a lot of it is just a loss of connection, a loss of function uh, that uh, may prohibit you from uh, you know using it within uh, a, a workout. No, I think that's good advice, but the truth is nobody fucking does. Nobody's going to do yeah. it, but it'd be yeah. interesting if they did, like an oh, experiment. It is. It's it's good advice. It's good advice because if you were to do that, I think that in itself would already help and make a difference. The reality of it is nobody's going to do that. Sure, mm -hmm. nobody's going to start brushing their cheek teeth the opposite hand, eating with the opposite hand, combing their hair with the opposite hand, yeah. you know, picking groceries up with the, op the the less dominant. Unfortunately, we just we're not that aware. As, you know, we're not we we have so many other things that we need to be more aware of before we even get to that level where we're being that aware of what we're doing. So, to me, a more unilateral work is yeah. is in hand, but addressing it. This is why the those programs were designed was to help people try and troubleshoot and figure out why am I not moving properly? Why is one side developing more than the other? There's a root cause of this. Mm -hmm. I'm, we're mm -hmm. speculating right now because we're on a podcast and I can't see the person, but if they were in front of me, that would be my job as a coach is to figure out why is there an imbalance here? Where is the breakdown and the communication in their body? And then help them address that. Well, and it also highlights like how much do you want it to change, right? So if you're not willing to do that, like uh, for me, like I broke my arm twice the same year, my right arm. I had to learn everything with my left arm. And that's something that like totally transformed like the way that I do things, uh, you know, in terms of like being able to activate and like, like actively use both arms. Like I just do that all the time now. Yeah, one of the most uh, imbalanced, you know, from right to left. Because everybody, most people are going to have a little bit of a discrepancy uh, between the right and left side. But man, one, I trained one kid who uh, was a pitcher for his, most of his life in baseball. Like as a kid growing up, and this kid was just, and he could throw heat. I mean, in high school, he was hitting almost 90 miles an hour. I mean, just incredible. Um, but when I trained him, his body was morphed and twisted into this pitcher. His right arm was way more developed. His his you know strength in his right it was like two it was like you took two separate people and cut them in half and then glued them together. And that was all because of what Justin's talking about, just using one side over and over and over again. It's pretty crazy. 